You ready for round three, Algebra 2? Here we go. I know this is a long section, but bear with me. We're almost done, I swear. Um, the last video we were kind of talking about uh, actually leads us into the horizontal line test for inverses, okay? Um, which says that the inverse of a function f is itself a function if and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph of f in more than one place, okay? So this is the original graph f. Um, essentially, we, if we were to graph the inverse, we'd have to reflect it along that line. Remember the y equals x. Um, so essentially, we used to have the vertical line test to test for regular functions, which totally works. Except that when we reflect it, let's see what happens here. Oh, that was awful. Hang on. <laughs> Let me get rid of that. Uh, here he is. Okay. All right. Let's try that again. So when we reflect it along this line here, we get the parabola going kind of like such. Okay which we know it fails the vertical line test, okay? But how could we tell from our original function that it was going to fail the vertical line test? Well, essentially, if we swung this back up here, it would then be a horizontal line going through this parabola, all right? Notice how my lines are drawn, connecting the sides here, kind of like a guitar, you know, this guitar strings. Um, so if, essentially, if we have the original graph and we test with a horizontal line, that'll tell us if the inverse is going to pass the vertical line test, okay? So since we're switching everything wi with our inverses, we switch it from a vertical line test to the horizontal line test, okay? Now be careful with this. Don't get it confused because you got to pay attention to what it's asking. If it's asking about the original function and you're given a picture of the original function, then you're using the vertical line test. If it's at giving you the original function but asking you about uh, the inverse, then you got to think, okay, it's got to pass the horizontal line test here, okay, because I have to switch everything, and my graph is really going to be like this, okay? It's a little weird to think about. Please make sure you have them straight. If you're being asked about the inverse, you're going to want to use the horizontal line test, okay? Now, be careful, because once you have graphed the inverse, f of negative 1, uh, it goes back to the vertical line test, because it's, it's already oriented the way it's supposed to be, okay? Alrighty, example three says, tell whether the inverse of each function is a function. So they're giving you the original. So essentially, if I'm talking about the inverse, that's going to be the horizontal line test. I've already, it needs to pass to be an in, or the inverse be a function. Okay. So, well, let's see, does this guy pass the horizontal line test? If I draw a bunch of horizontal lines in, is he going to pass? Well, so far it's just hitting all in one spot, so I don't have any repeaters. So yes, this guy passes. He is going to be a function because it passes the horizontal line test. Also, if it passes the vertical line test, that means this original function is a um, function as well. So yes, oh sorry, I guess I was supposed to explain here. Uh, our original, oh goodness, all right, two mess ups qualifies to get an eraser. Okay, we want to box our whole answer here. Okay, let's try that again. Yes, comma, our original function passes the horizontal line test. Therefore, our inverse will be a function. Okay, so this whole thing is our answer. And I know some of us don't like to copy the examples that just have pictures, but do it. This stuff is important. You're going to need it tomorrow. Alrighty, so yes, it's, uh, it's, it is a function because this guy passes a horizontal line test. Alright, let's take a look at graph B. Well, I can already tell you, this is our original guy. Our original guy is a function because it passes the, ho or the vertical line test, but our inverse fails miserably. We hit one, two, three, four spots right there. And a bunch of these horizontal lines, if I draw them in, they're going to hit four spots. Even up here, I still hit two. So this guy, no, our inverse is not a function. because our original graph fails the HLT. 
Okay. Oh, that's very sad. That means we don't have a function. Alrighty, so he fails the HLT. So that guy is not going to be a, a function when we have the inverse. Alrighty. Let's go back then to uh, some equations working, finding the inverse of the function. I want you to be good at these because we're going to need to know how to do it. Remember, all we have to do here for these, whoops, sorry about that. We have to switch x and y. And then we got to solve for for y again, okay? So essentially, remember, f of x is really just y. So I'm going to switch places with x here. So we get x equals 2y minus 3. Okay, now please don't leave it like that. We have to solve for y. So to do that, we are going to add 3 to both sides. So then we have x plus 3 equals 2y, because those 3's are gone. Uh, then we got to get rid of this uh, 2, so we're going to divide everything by 2. All right. Now, <coughs> again, this is not wrong. I have y equals x plus 3 all over 2. It's not wrong, um, but break it down a little bit because this is actually just a linear equation here. What you're going to do, if you remember all the way back to chapter 3 where we did these, was we actually separated. We had x over 2 plus 3 over 2, and we can do that. Um, so we separated our fractions here. They each get a 2. Um, and then x, of course, we'd have y equals 1 because we can put a 1 here. 1 half x plus and then 3 divided by 2 can't really do without it coming out nicely so we just put 3 halves so that is actually our function and you can see very clearly that this is a y equals mx plus b with a slope of 1 half and a y or y intercept of 3 halves which we don't really need to know we're not graphing it that is going to be the inverse of our function here okay and actually since we uh, had f of x as our original notation this y should actually be an f of x here and since it's the inverse, we can get a little tricky with this here. We can tell people it's the inverse by saying not just f of x, but f inverse of x is 1 half x plus 3 halves. Okay, if you leave the y in there, I'm not going to be too mad. But since we started out in function notation, we should end in function notation. Okay, let's try b together. b is tricky because of this absolute value sign. So um, again, we're still going to do the same thing, switch x and y here. So we have x equals 2 times the absolute value of y. Okay, so let's get rid of the 2 first and then we'll deal with the absolute value. So we divide each side by 2. We get the absolute value of y equals, remember, 1x over 2, we'll just say is 1 half x. Okay, and then to get rid of the absolute values, essentially, uh, what we do here is we say, okay, well, I can put a positive in here and it'll turn out positive. I put the same negative in here, it'll turn out positive again. So essentially, I just need the positive and negative of this will give me the right answer. So to take the absolute value bars off, we just add a plus or minus over on the other side, which is a little bit weird to think about, but it kind of makes sense because of the properties of absolute value because I'm allowed to take anything positive and put it in here. It turns out positive. I'm allowed to take anything negative that I, that I could put in here and it turns out positive as well. So it's gonna be the same thing. So there we go. And then that one was in Y notation. So Y equals plus or minus one half X. Alrighty, uh, letter C is just like letter A. So I'm actually not going to do that one for you. I want you guys to do this one in your notes. Do in notes and show Miss Warner tomorrow that I rock at inverses. Okay, so that's your job. Uh, don't write this down. I want you to actually do the problem and show me that you're awesome and know how to do these. Alrighty, so show me this problem tomorrow and then we'll get started on our worksheets tomorrow. Thanks for sticking with me. I know that one was a long one. It's a marathon, but we made it. Woohoo! Good night!